Last time we were looking at quadratic equations and finding the roots of them. We saw three different methods to find the root of any quadratic equation. The first one we looked at was the factorization method. Then we looked at the quadratic formula and now we are going to study the third method that is completing the square. Now forget the name for some time and consider this equation x square minus 4 is equal to 0. Do we actually need to factorize this or use the quadratic formula to get its solutions? No. Let us try solving this. We can simply transpose the constant term that is minus 4 to the other side to get plus 4 and then solve it further to get the values of x as positive or negative 2. Now we were able to do so because after transposing the constant term to the right hand side we got a perfect square on the left hand side that is x square. Let us now take another example and try solving it using the same method. We have here x square plus 6x minus 16 is equal to 0. First, we will transpose the constant term to the right hand side of this equation to get x square plus 6x is equal to 16. But we get stuck here. That is because the term on the left hand side, that is x square plus 6x is not a perfect square. So here comes the concept of completing the square. We need to form a perfect square on the left hand side of this equation. But before we proceed with this, we, there are two identities that we must be clear with. The first one is a plus b the whole square is equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square and the second one is a minus b the whole square is equal to a square minus 2ab plus b square. Note that in the expansion of these identities, the only difference is in the sign of the middle term. And when we solve any equation using completing the square method, it is this sign that defines the sign of the square term form. Let us now proceed. So here we are with the equation. Now we know that we need to complete the square of this x square plus 6x in order to solve the equation completely. We also know that a perfect square can be either of the form a square plus 2ab plus b square or a square minus 2ab plus b square. The sign over here of the middle term that is 6x is positive. So we will go with the first identity. Also we know that a is equal to x over here and this is the middle term. So, it is the product of 2, a and b. Can we write it as the product of 2ab? Yes, we can. Let us see how. We can write this as x square plus 2 times x times 3. From here, we can easily make out that our b is equal to 3. Now, to complete the square of this term, we will need to add b square, that is the square of 3. But we can't change the equation, right? So, we will have to add this to the other side of the equation also. Here we are. Now this side has become a perfect square. x square plus 2 times x times 3 plus 3 square can also be written as x plus 3 the whole square. Why? Apply the identity and check yourself. Next, we can simplify this to 16 plus 9. From here we can easily get that x plus 3 the whole square is equal to 25 and x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus 5. From here we can easily find out the values of x. That is 5 minus 3, 2 or minus 5 minus 3, that is minus 8. Can we now conclude something? Let us see. We have 6x is equal to 2ab and since we know that our a is equal to x, we can rewrite this as 6x is equal to 2 times x times b. When we cancel out x from both the sides, we are left with 6 is equal to 2b and b is equal to 6 by 2. Can we find out a relation from here? Yes, b is half the coefficient of the x term. Let us see another example. Here we have the next example. First of all, we will begin by transposing this constant term to the other side of the equation to get x square minus 4x is equal to 12. Now we know that the middle term over here is 4x and the coefficient of x if we just see the number is 4. And we also know that half of 4 is 2. So we will add 2 square to both the sides of the equations to get x square minus 4x plus 2 square is equal to 12 plus 2 square. Now when we simplify this, we can easily write this as x minus 2 the whole square. Now we took a negative sign over here because the middle term also had a negative sign. And then we can simplify this as 12 plus 4. Next we get x minus 2 whole square is equal to 16 x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus of 4 and we can easily find out that x is equal to 6 or x is equal to 
negative 2. Now look at this example. Here we will proceed with the same way. The first step is transposing the constant term to the other side. We will get 3x square minus 5x is equal to minus 2. Now we need to factorize this but we need to notice that 3 over here is not a perfect square but this 3x square is the result of a square. So that means 3x square has to be a perfect square number but it is not. So we can do one thing. We can divide the entire equation by 3 and since we are doing it on the left hand side to balance it on the right hand side also we need to divide the equation by 3. Now we get x square minus 5 by 3x is equal to minus 2 by 3. Always remember one thing. Try and reduce the coefficient of x square to 1 so that it becomes easy to solve here. Now we can proceed with the further step. We know that the middle term is 5 by 3 and half of 5 by 3 is 5 by 6. So we will have to add 5 by 6 square on both the sides. So we get x square minus 5 by 3x plus 5 by 6 square and on the other side minus 2 by 3 plus 5 by 6 square. When we simplify this, we get x minus 5 by 6 square and on the other side we get minus 2 by 3 plus 25 by 36. Upon simplifying this, we get this as 36 minus 24 plus 25 and this as x minus 5 by 6 whole square. On further solving it, we get here 1 by 36 and x minus 5 by 6 square. So x minus 5 by 6 is equal to plus or minus 1 by 6. Now we can find the values of x as 1 by 6 plus 5 by 6 or minus 1 by 6 plus 5 by 6. Here we get x is equal to 1 and here we get x is equal to 4 by 6 which is equal to 2 by 3. 